In his 12 years as CEO and chair, Paul O'Neill increased Alcoa's annual net income by five times, its market capitalization by $27 billion, and led to the company becoming one of the best performing stocks on the Dow Jones Index. But here's the kicker. He attributes all of this success to focusing on his people, specifically their health and safety. In this episode, I'm gonna break down O'Neill's strategy so you can do the same. Welcome back, I'm Samantha McGorick and you are watching the No WTA Show, where I hope board members and executives like yourself know what to ask and when to act so that you can lead with your heart and put people first by leading safe and healthy work. So make sure you subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out. This week we're talking about leadership and I wanna take you back to 1987. Some of you may not have been born yet, but stay with me. Ronald Reagan is president the Minnesota Twins win the World Series, the Canadian Edmonton Oilers win the Stanley Cup, Michael Douglas hits the cinemas with cult classics Wall Street and Fatal Attraction, and Paul O'Neill is appointed CEO of Pittsburgh-based American aluminum manufacturing giant Alcoa. In 1987, Alcoa was losing profits rapidly and had failed product lines. The company and its investors were desperate for a leader to take them out of the financial rut they had found themselves in and get them back in black. But O'Neill's focus on safety appeared completely illogical to investors and the board. O'Neill had a clear vision. He would use workplace safety as a unifying point of collaboration across the business. The results were that safety had become a lever for continuous improvement, which as I mentioned earlier, had a significant positive impact to Alcoa's bottom line market capitalization, and share price. You see, O'Neill knew he had to transform Alcoa, but he also knew that if he ordered people to change, he wouldn't get the buy-in or the transformational change that he was seeking. So he decided he was going to start by focusing on one thing. He thought if he focused on disrupting the habits around one highly impactful habit, that other good habits could take hold. That one highly impactful habit was workplace health and safety because safety, as he puts it, is a unifying point of collaboration, meaning everyone wants to go home in the same condition they came to work in, or better. And that need or desire to be safe and healthy does not discriminate depending on your role or job title in the organization. And he was right. By establishing an organizational habit of suggesting safety improvements, Alcoa experienced recommendations to further business improvements that otherwise would have remained out of sight or simply unreported. And this created a pattern of better communication and a chain reaction that lifted profits. So I've captured O'Neill's leadership approach in three steps, and I'm gonna break them down so that you can apply them in your business. But before we get started, write safety leader in the comments below right now. If you've ever heard of Paul O'Neill or the story of how Alcoa became one of the best performing stocks in the 90s, by focusing on health and safety. Now let's get started. Step one, communicate your vision to the entire organization and back that up with non-negotiables. In 1987, when O'Neill joined Alcoa, he came up against a lot of resistance from shareholders, analysts, the board, his executive team, and even the workforce for his commitment to zero injuries in the workplace. Zero injuries was non-negotiable for O'Neill. He positioned his leadership on improving worker health and safety above all else. He put a stake in the ground and said that safety was not just a priority, listen, it's a precondition of organizational behavior. And in this, his first speech to investors as CEO, he didn't talk about profit margins or revenue projections. He talked about worker safety. He argued that investors should treat safety as a key indicator of the effectiveness of a management team and that organizations with potential for greatness are workplaces where people don't get hurt. Let's listen in. You know, this is my counsel to you. Safety should never be a priority. It should be a precondition. Like before you can get up and walk around, you have to breathe. Safety should be like breathing. It should be a precondition for organizational behavior. 
Now, it's not like Alcoa workers and management were giving O'Neill pushback because they didn't care about safety. The truth is, they were comfortable with the status quo. Alcoa was doing better than ever in terms of its injury performance, and they had better than average performance in their industry. But O'Neill had a vision, which was people should not get hurt at work, regardless of an industry safety rating. And to support this vision, he had a few clear non-negotiables. One, he communicated to the entire company that everyone had the responsibility to report safety issues and improvements. To support that, he improved the company's online reporting system. Two, he supported management to act on what was reported by giving them the authority to do so, and he held them accountable. And three, he also made it very clear to his management team that there would be no more budgeting for safety. So when he made his first visit to the company's huge aluminum smelter in East Tennessee, he held a meeting with management and the site supervisors at the plant. He said, from now on, we're not going to budget for safety. As soon as anyone identifies anything that could get someone hurt, I want you to fix it and I will figure out how to pay for it. He then turned to the union leaders and said, here's my home number. And if they don't do what I just said, I want you to call me. You see what he did here, right? He publicly gave management the authority to act on safety issues, while at the same time giving the workforce ownership to report. Very powerful in giving everyone responsibility for safety. If you take this approach, be brave though when things get difficult, because it's not always easy to follow through, but if you do, you will reap the rewards. So step number one, is to communicate to your vision for health and safety, and back that up with some non-negotiables. Step two, follow through. So let's look at how O'Neill did this when a challenge arose. About three weeks after his visit to the Tennessee plant, O'Neill got a call from a production worker. The worker said, you came down here and you said all this fancy stuff about safety, so I just wanted you to know that for the past two or three days, we've had a broken down conveyor belt, which means that the boys have had to manually hoist hot 600 pound ingots from one spot to another. This worker was testing O'Neill's commitment and how O'Neill responded would be critical to the success of his vision. So now O'Neill called the plant manager, told him to report to the smelter, get the problem fixed and to call him back when the job was done. O'Neill got a call at 5 a.m. the next morning that the plant had been fixed. So step number two, follow through with your vision and your non-negotiables in order to show your commitment. Step three, reach every person in the organization. Sounds huge, doesn't it? But let's break it down as to how you can do just that. O'Neill believed that an organization has the potential for greatness if every worker can say yes to three simple questions without hesitation. Question one, can I say every day, I am treated with dignity and respect by everyone I encounter, regardless of my pay grade, my title, race, ethnicity, religious beliefs, or gender? O'Neill said treating people with dignity and respect was a down payment on nobody ever gets hurt here because we care about our own commitment to safety and we care about the people we work with. He said the down payment swells up into everything you do. It creates a sense of pride about the organization that you're involved in. And this is an important point. When the workers at Alcoa cared just as much about the organization they worked for as they did about their colleagues, they started to suggest improvements to efficiencies and productivity. And that is how O'Neill used safety as a lever for overall business success. And one of the ways you can put this into practice is to ensure that your business has policies that define acceptable and non-acceptable behavior, such as a code of conduct or an anti-bullying and harassment policy. However, as a business leader, you have to go beyond the policies and procedures. You need to set the tone of acceptable and unacceptable behavior outline consequences for non-compliance, and you guessed it, follow through. As a leadership coach, Michael Hyatt suggests leaders need to create an environment that is safe for dissent, meaning people need to be able to disagree with you 
as a business leader, whether you're the CEO or a member of the board, but everyone feels they have an opportunity for their voice to be heard and that they are treated with dignity and respect in doing so. Let's take a listen to O'Neill on this particular point. I believe in, a, in an organization with a potential for true greatness, none of those characteristics have anything to do with the dignity and respect that every individual is accorded. And here's the test. You know, if you go into a place where there's a receptionist at the desk and you just stand against the wall and watch how the receptionist treats people when they come in in the morning, if you can detect that the high level executives get any different kind of greeting than the people who take care of the cafeteria, then you can't pass the test of we really mean everyone here can say they're treated with dignity and respect every day in everything that they do. The second question that O'Neill said that every worker must be able to assertively say yes to is, am I given the things I need like education, training, tools, encouragement, so I can make a contribution to this organization that gives meaning to my life? Your challenge here as a business leader is to find a way to communicate consistently that everyone in the organization has an opportunity to contribute to the organization's purpose. And by doing so, it gives them a sense of purpose and contribution to their work. If you are not already getting out and visiting your workplace and meeting the people who work for you, start doing so. Get to know the people in the organization, their struggles, their ideas, understand what they enjoy about their job. And for those of you who are already out and talking to their workforce, find a way to communicate to them their value to the organization's purpose. I mean, we spend most of our waking life at work. If your workforce doesn't get a sense of purpose from what they do, then you are either failing them or they are not the right fit for your business. The third question that O'Neill says every worker must be able to assertively say yes to is, am I recognized for what I do by someone I care about? When we look at the theory behind what makes a safety culture, it is commonly associated with reward and recognition. As a business leader, you have the opportunity to recognize and promote the behavior of those who contribute to safety outcomes. I mean, for example, you could recognize those in your management team who have implemented high order controls in their area of responsibility. If you're a board member, you could reward executives through their incentive plans for their contribution to safety innovation. But note that O'Neill mentions by someone they care about. The point here is that reward and recognition needs to be tailored to the individual. For example, some people in your organization may not give a stuff about company awards or a voucher or a public acknowledgement. In fact, some of them may hate those ideas. It could be as simple as you or someone whose opinion that that person cares about or respects recognizing their behavior or actions. Imagine getting the call from a CEO as to how I've contributed to the business in some way due to a safety idea I thought of. Now I'd love to know what you're doing to reward and recognize people for their contributions to health and safety or just general business improvements. Let me know in the comments below. Alcoa is obviously a great success story, but it's more than that. O'Neill is a great example of a business leader who leads by focusing on the people in his business, specifically that they deserve to be safe and healthy. And by doing so, he shifted the company from one that was struggling financially and happy with the status quo to being one of the safest companies to work for while doing significantly well financially. And you can do the same by implementing these steps. So let's do a quick recap on the three steps. Step one, communicate your vision to the entire organization and back that up with some non-negotiables. Step two, follow through to show your commitment even when times are tough. And step three, reach every person in the organization. One of the foundational principles of leading safe and healthy work is sharing knowledge across business, industry, and borders. In this way, we can share with each other what works and what hasn't worked, 
And that's pretty important when we're talking about people's lives. Let me know in the comments below if there is someone you would like me to do a leadership case study on that this community could benefit from, and I will save those for future videos. As always, I hope this has helped you in your quest to know what to ask and when to act. If you like this video, do let me know by clicking the thumbs up icon below. But more importantly, if you think that others would find similar value from this content, please feel free to share it with them. And if you want more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell if you want to be notified when I post a new video every Wednesday. If you want more great insights into what to ask and when to act, plus personal insights that I just can't put on video, come on over to samanthamagalrick.com, sign up to get e email updates, and I would love to have you on board. Be brave and stay true to your commitment to lead from your heart by putting people first, and I am confident you will reap the rewards. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.